Hello, my name's Tony Phillips. I'm author of the book, The Complete Guide to Fujifilm's X-Pro2. I'm here today to talk to you about some of the unobvious things about Fujifilm's X-Pro2 camera. Let's start with something simple. The joystick is not only an easy way to relocate the focus frame in your composition, but it's also a really good way to navigate the menus. Used exactly as though it was the arrow keys, just scroll down Select the item that you want, select it, back out, and you've made the change. Quite simple. And very easy to navigate very quickly through the, through the menu structure. Let's move on to something a bit more complex, though. The X-Pro2 has three auto ISO ranges that you can set, which is a good thing. And you do this by visiting the menu down to here, down to here, and then go in here and you can make settings by moving sideways through this. But the question is how do you select these quickly when you want to use them in the field? You can go to what we you can go through what we've just done and make a selection here and then press the shutter button to get back out. And now you're in that auto ISO range. But the quickest way I've been able to find to do this in the field is to assign it to a function button and the function button which works best for me is the left arrow. I've assigned it to the left arrow so that I can do left arrow scroll up or down to the one that I want and then left arrow again and I'm out and I've made that selection. What you're really doing by doing this is you're going into the ISO auto setting and selecting which one of these you want. You could press the right arrow and change the settings, but that's not what we want to do here. What we want to do here is basically make a selection while we're in the field and then go off and be able to use it. So to go over that really quickly, to set the auto ISO range that you want to use at any particular time, assign it to the left arrow button, scroll to the one you want and press the left arrow button again and you've done it. Let's talk about exposure compensation. The exposure compensation dial provides plus and minus 3 EV, but if you move the dial to the C position, then the front command dial now gives you plus and minus 5 EV. This is a soft switching method. What's not immediately apparent here is that you lose access to program shift. Well, you don't really, but that's the unobvious thing. If you're shooting in automatic for both shutter speed and aperture, then the front command dial normally provides program shift here. Now, if you don't know what program shift is, basically, once the camera has exposure, it allows you to shift between a combination of both shutter speed and aperture to keep the exposure according to what the camera believes is correct and give you control over your depth of field or your shutter speed for freezing or blurring um, action. So that's what the front dial normally does, but if you move this to C mode, now you're getting exposure compensation. The unobvious thing is that if you press this dial inwards just once, then what you get is you get program shift, press it inwards again, and you go back to exposure compensation. So you could, if you like, leave this on C all the time, get plus and minus 5 EV on uh, exposure compensation, and a quick press of the front dial gives you the ability to switch between exposure compensation and program shift. Very, very handy. I'd like to talk about the focus frame. I've set up the camera on the back of the X-Pro2 to show you the focus frame in action. The way the focus frame works has changed in the X-Pro2 from previous X cameras. Now, whatever is inside the focus frame, the camera chooses whatever is closest to the lens. So let me show you that. I've set this up to focus on uh, a, one of the ball joints on one of my magic arms that's holding the uh, microphone. So if I focus on that now, the ball of the arm is in focus inside the focus frame. So I'll move the camera slightly and focus on the other arm, on the other end of the arm. Now, if I bring that so that both ends of the arm, and that's about a five inch length, 
and the ball is in focus, look what happens. The camera chooses to focus on the closest part of the ball, irrespective of the fact that the actual contrast in the frame would be much higher for the black part of the rod. So this is pretty clear evidence that the camera is actually choosing to focus on whatever is closest rather than which whatever provides the highest contrast. This is actually very, very handy because in the past, the X cameras used to select whatever was the highest contrast inside of the frame. And you could often find yourself focusing on, say, someone's eye and the camera would choose to focus on something behind them because that was actually a slightly higher contrast than what, what you were trying to get done. So this is a much improved feature. Here's a quick tip. There's a rapid way to check for focus in playback mode. This is a picture I snapped of the X-T2 in a video rig at a photo convention. To check for critical focus, simply press the rear command dial inwards. It zooms to wherever you have the focus frame. So if you relocated it, it'll zoom to that position. In this case, I just pointed the camera and pressed the shutter button. To get out, simply press the rear command dial again. You can, of course, roll the rear dial and you will see this uh, graph as you zoom in, but it gets you the same result. So I like to be able to do that. In fact, if you just saw what I did there, if you're rolling it and you're, and you're halfway through, you can press it to zoom right out straight away. Moving on, the PDAF area has changed in size from previous X cameras. The area of larger squares in this view is the area of PDAF or phase detect pixels on the camera sensor. This is the view you get in shooting mode. If you like to use the rule of thirds for composition and use autofocus, then you can see that the area we've selected is inside the PDAF area. What that means is that autofocus gets to use the fast phase detect pixels when you compose using the rule of thirds. Let's talk briefly about raw conversion. A lot has been said about the quality of the JPEGs which come from X cameras, and that's certainly true of the X Pro 2. But what is not so obvious is that if you shoot raw or raw plus one of the JPEG modes, then you can reprocess the image in the camera using raw conversion. You do that by displaying the image by pressing the playback button, and then you press the Q button to take you directly into the raw conversion menu. In here you can alter many of the different aspects of an image to reprocess it, but let's just choose film simulation for the moment. This image was shot in Provia Standard, but we'll switch it down to Acros, say. Now it's as simple as pressing the Q button again to create the image and press OK to store it. So we have the original image in colour and the reprocessed image using the settings that we just applied. So there you go. That's a few of the unobvious things and some of the obvious things about the X-Pro2 camera. These are the kind of insights that you'll see in the book. As well, you'll learn how to use the flash so it doesn't look like you've used a flash, how to use a smartphone to send pictures and to control the camera, all about wireless flash, which is truly the best tool that you can use to dramatically improve your photography. The book comes in three formats, PDF, an EPUB and Mobi for reading on Kindle and other devices like that. As well, there's a hard copy, both uh, colour and black and white. For those people who like to handle actual books, um, it's a good option. Also included with the purchase of the book, I'm offering two bonuses. There's no real reason to do this, just to give you more value from buying my book. So the first bonus is a book on mastering flash for Fuji X cameras. It's 132 pages and it goes through everything flash, some of which is covered in the book, uh, the flash modes, of course, but it gets into all of the issues relating to manual flash, um, off-camera wireless flash, the use of lights and strobes, cables, radio triggers, and so forth. Also, I include a spreadsheet which lists all of the settings that you can set in the X-Pro2. I give you an explanation of what I set them to and why I set it that way. And there's a column for you to record uh, your own settings. So that's it. Uh, if you buy the book, there's a two-week money-back guarantee offered by the publisher. You can uh, buy it from freedomanarchives.com. And I hope that you enjoy. Thank you.